afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, Warriors for Freedom. This me down here at, by the beach at work, the, watching the waves roll in, watching the sea coming. It's an absolutely beautiful day in Florida today. And I'm just sitting here and just relaxing and contemplating about the week, contemplating about some of the things I shared with you Warriors of Freedom out there about sexual addiction, about my addictions, about um, pornography and impure thoughts and all the things that we as men may struggle with. But as I sit on this beautiful beach and looking at all the creation that God has here today, I just want to let you know to remember one thing, it's True Confessions Friday. True Confessions Friday. Remember, and I've been telling you, man, that I've been a set example by confessing something from my sexual inventory, confessing something that I've either kept secret for a long time, never talked about or never shared about. And so today is that time. And so, you know, I just want to share that in a True Confession Friday is a time when I demonstrate for men that you can open up and begin to talk to your wife, talk to your mentor, talk to somebody about um, the things that you have been keeping secret for a long time sexually. So right now, um, I ain't going to take a long time because I only get a couple minutes, okay, and I'm sitting here on the side of the beach and it's absolutely beautiful. I wish my wonderful wife was here, but you know what? I just know that God is doing something amazing and and I have to live life from a perspective of being happy, of being restored, of being delivered, and being set free. So I just want, want, want to, to share about that today. And today, I, I think I'm going to talk about it, uh, about what I demanded in, in past relationships and in, in marriages and stuff, was that the women I was involved with, that they be faithful to me, that they, that they were faithful to me in every way. And my expectation was unrealistic because I might have been for a time and a period faithful to them as far as not um, having penetrative sex, as far as not um, having affairs, so to speak. And later on in my life, it bloomed into a whole lot more, a lot more craziness, and maybe because I stuffed so much of it. But today, what I want to talk about is something that happens at work a lot. What I was an expert at was having these innocent, what I had to call innocent conversations with women that had sexual overtones, women that I worked with. And today, I want to confess about a boss that I had once in Beverly Hills in California, you know, and I call no names, like I say, I call no names, I don't say nothing, but we had a, a way of bantering back and forth with each other. She would say, Laverne, come in here. She would emphasize some words versus some other words. Everything had a sexual overtone to it. And what I begin to realize that I might have been being faithful to my wife as far as, as not um, having sex and as far as not um, uh, dating another woman, but emotionally I was making myself available to another woman to have her meet needs and meet meet needs within each other. And I want to confess that during most of this relationship at work, I was expecting my wife to be faithful and expecting my wife to be pure in heart and mind and thought and everything, but I was on the, on the sly, on the outside, not even totally aware of it until I did my sexual inventory. I was basically having these emotional attachments and later on ballooned into a lot more devious type things. But it's so innocent, guys. I want to warn you today. It's so innocent. Little little conversations. Uh, bring me lunch. Um, uh, my boss would call me into the office and she'd begin to massage my shoulder. Or she began to say, hey, 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 my neck's hurting right here. And I massage her shoulder. And then we were doing some work. At the same time, and it seems innocent, but at the same time, it's meeting some void, some need within this person. And it has a sexual overtone to it. Adults know this and adults understand it. And we play with fire. So today I want to confess to you that I did that in my early relationships. I did that in, 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 my, in my first and second marriage with women that I worked with and that I was close with, intimately with, and, and they would say, Laverne, you're always such a good listener. Laverne, you always listen to me. My husband won't listen to me. And I'll hear this over and over again, not realizing that whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. Okay, and later on in, in my relationships and marriages, I, I reaped my wife's not being faithful to me. But guess what? I had sown the seeds. I had allowed that spirit to penetrate and enter into my life and enter into my relationship, okay? So today, I confess to you today that I've been unfaithful in my relationships and in my wives emotionally, with my wives emotionally, with other women that I work with. And man, I want to caution you against this today. I want to caution you, caution you about being too close, about coming too close into the space with other women uh, in a workplace and, and begin to 
are getting some need, some intimacy need met where it feels safe. But at the same time, you demand it. If my wife was to do that in front of me, I would be upset. I, I'd get insulted. I'd feel disrespected. Okay, and I'm here to want you to know that we feel loved by the respect that we get. Okay, and at the same time, women feel loved by their closeness and their intimacy with us and us paying attention to them. So when we pay attention to someone else, hey, Sue, that's you. You cut men on me. You can hear me? <laughs> I, you cut on me anyhow. I guess you figure out how to do that. I must, most, <laughs> okay. See, hey guys, it ain't nowhere to be safe, you know. You never know when your wife gonna show up, so don't do that kind of stuff. Even in the workplace, all right? You never know when the shadow will show, <laughs> like my brother used to say, okay? But guess what? Technology makes it great. Because what we can do now, we can actually be transparent and be honest. And when we, and even when you confess it, you never know, your wife might be listening. Okay, so, um, I know so you got to confess to your wife, I'm not going to What you got to say, babe? What you say? Um, I think it's you. true. I mean, I, yeah, but I just pressed the button. I didn't expect to go live. I have on no makeup or nothing like that, you know. But um, I think well, it's yeah, so true, I you know, because... My hair also, my hair falling off. I yeah. need makeup, man. Don't be crazy. Men do not need makeup. That's silly. But the fact of the matter is that oh, um, a lot of the time, the kids, the kids say, "Daddy, you're losing your hair. You're getting gray and all that money. You're like you know more. That's gross. Y'all talking about each other like that. But you know what? Even when you're getting gray and supposedly distinguished, you better watch out and be careful with women. You better be watch out and be careful, especially if you're a sex addict. Most of us are living in denial. I know that. Okay, I lived in denial for a long time, but. I'm glad you could talk with the women, Sue, and what they do in the workplace that you come on this line. I think a lot of the times what ends up happening is what people say, you know, like we were having this conversation with some good friends of ours the other day, and they were saying they could have friends of opposite genders, and I said, you cannot do that. You know, my experience says to me that when a woman is trying to be friends with a man who's not a husband, he's meeting some sort of emotional need, and before you know it, the day you're mad with the person, the other person, then this guy is the person you're going to turn to and things get out of hand you know you know when you're attracted to some other guy or some other woman and you have to guard your heart and put a ring of protection around your marriage you don't do that you know because i've heard so many cases even to myself you know as i said so when i was young you have a number yeah i saw i thought you had better you know but the thing about it is when you are uh, when you do that and i did that when i was younger and i found myself in places you know as i said i had there were issues with myself and some gentlemen who were married and we didn't start off to have a, a an affair so to speak but it was just you know you got talking then you ate you got had a meal you had a date with the quiz then the next thing you were in a position and then you were caught and you were trapped you know so really and truly i think that yes you have to be aware of that and uh any 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 person of your good sex who is not your partner, your intimate partner, you really shouldn't be cultivating a friendship with them by yourself. You know, I think it's okay to cultivate a friendship when the other person goes. So like if I have a friend who's a guy who's the girl, both of us become his friend. If the girl right. has a who's a lady, both of us become her friend and that way it keeps things safe, you know? So that's it. Yep. But anyway, yep. I'm coming off with my nothing. <laughs> All right, there you go. Well, you you're still looking good, babe. You're still looking good. You're looking sweet. And at least you know where I am. Hey, you know I out here by the beach, but I work it. You know, I ain't doing the wrong thing and looking at the wrong thing. All right? Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. You know, I ain't perfect, but I'm working on it. And to that, guys, today I just want to confess to you. Okay, that, that's one of my confessions. And every Friday, confession Friday, we can confess something. I encourage you to go out there, find a mentor, find a Get some sobriety under your belt. I mean, wait, wait until she can trust you again. And wait, and you know, and even then you might get the cold shoulder. Even then you might get the raised eyebrow. But guess what? As we begin to come out of the closet and we begin to talk about these issues, I believe intimacy is going to come closer and become closer and closer between men and women. Are we going to take a relationship to a deeper level? And our sex addicts, sex addicts begin to get some help. We'll have somewhere we can go to talk and communicate. I think talking to other men, talking to mentors in your life, sharing with family members your struggles. We can struggle together.
together, but we can rise up together. So, men today, for True Confessions Friday, I want you to confess something, okay? Start with something simple, not, not something big and crazy and wild like me, okay? Because I've been doing this a while, okay? But you begin to confess something that brings some vulnerability. It'll also, at the same time, bring some intimacy into your relationships and intimacy into communication. And guess what? Your wife's going to feel loved. Your loved one's going to feel loved. They're going to feel closer to you because now you're opening up. And us men, you know, we like to go into that shit and we like to go deep inside and we don't come out we don't we go into nothing room and, and say honey it ain't nothing happening honey I, what you thinking nothing what you doing nothing okay when our wives know we doing something we think it's something but a lot of times it's because we're fearful and we're afraid so man i encourage you to come out today i encourage you to confess today and the bible says if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so let me pray for you father in the name of jesus on this beautiful beach, on this beautiful, uh, wonderful, amazing, fantastic Caribbean day. That's what it seems like. It looks like the Caribbean, the water's nice and blue. God, I just pray that you would bless relationships, you would bless men that have overcome and walked in purity this week and are getting closer and closer because it's progress, not perfection. I pray that your anointing and blessing will be upon them and miracles will happen and deliverance will be real and families and lives and marriages and relationships will be saved. Bless my wife today. Bless my kids today. Bless my families today. Bless my in-laws today. Bless my in-laws today. Bless my brothers and sisters and bless all the relationships that I'm that are close in my life oh God and let something absolutely amazing happen today to bring you glory and honor in Jesus name I pray hey I'm out of here guys my lunch is over and um, you have a fantastic weekend and I'll be back at you next week and we're gonna be talking about some other sexual addiction issues warriors for freedom you stay fighting you find another man to war with and to fight with and you're gonna overcome this battle and you're gonna become all that God has called you to be that's it I'm out see you later I pick up my hat, I gotta go back, back to work. That's it, period. I'm